Hello, in this video we're just going to take a little bit of a look at um, the error message that we produced in the last video. So hopefully by now you've at the very least um, typed out this code yourself and uh, I, would, I would strongly suggest at the very least experimenting with this uh, see what you can change you know to uh, make it do something slightly different see if it works as you expect and ideally you've written some program that, com that gets user input and converts one number in one unit of measurement to some unit, some other number in some other unit of measurement. Or you've invented some exercise for yourself that's similar. Hopefully you've had a go at that, maybe converting miles to kilometers. And you shouldn't really encounter any great problems with that. Miles to kilometers would be basically the same program uh, as far as I can see, except that um, we don't need to subtract anything. We'd just be multiplying it by something. I think it was 1.609. Okay, so I just want to show you this thing that's appeared in in the console. If I run this and I enter something that isn't a number, hit return, then uh, we get this error trace. This is actually called a stack trace. Um, and the stack is basically how Java keeps track of um, one method calling another method. In other words, one method runs and it uses other methods, so other subroutines, and uh, they sort of all make each other execute in a kind of a, well, kind of a tree type thing, really. Um, but uh, let's not worry about that for the moment, because we're getting a bit ahead of, uh, ahead of ourselves, really. I just want to begin to familiarize you with this, because you're going to see a lot of these, and it looks very intimidating to start with when you get errors in Java. Uh, they, they can look quite disturbing. So um, one thing to say is uh, regarding this program, I don't think there's any, there's not really any way we can fix it at the moment using what we already know at this point so that it can handle uh, input that's not a number in a way that's more elegant. We totally can fix that, just not with what we know so far as far as I can see or not easily. So um, we're not going to worry about it for the moment. We'll look at it later on, how we would fix this sort of thing. But when you see an error message like this, very often the first and the last lines are the most important. Uh, so if we look at the top, it tells us what the basic problem is. The problem is we've got a Java util dot input mismatch exception. Now this is a input mismatch exception is actually a class. And what we have here is, this is showing you that we say that an exception has been thrown. And we'll be looking at that later on. But you could guess from the name of it, input mismatch exception, that there's some sort of mismatch with the input that we've entered, which is of course the case. We entered letters when it was expecting a floating point number. The last line in this case actually gives us the error, it gives us the line and the file uh, where the error occurred. So um, with really big stack traces, something that you can end up doing is sort of looking down them for the first line that it mentions uh, that's actually in your own code that you've actually written. You know, so you end up starting from the top and you're looking down it and you're looking at files that you haven't written yourself and eventually you come to one that you have written yourself and that's where you can start investigating the error. In this case, uh, there's only one line referring to our own code and it's right at the bottom and it's here at .java line 13 so if I click on that it will actually take me to the line there we go it's highlighted it and that is where the error occurred so we did scanner.next float and that was expecting the user to, it, to input a float but the user me in this case inputted some letters so it threw a wobbly it threw an exception in fact technically speaking. Wobbly is not a technical term. Okay, um, we've also got a warning here in this program and if we click on it it says resource leak scanner is never closed. Now that's not a big problem but we shouldn't leave warnings in our programs. Uh, what, it, what it means is well it wants me to all it wants me to do is what I'm about to show you which is uh, this. Let's create a um, new line in our program. In fact, I can do this 
immediately after I've used the scanner, since I'm not going to use it again for anything. By this point in the program, line 14 here, I've, I've, I've just created a new blank line, of course, but I'm not using the scanner anymore. So I can write scanner.close. And then the warning goes away, and that makes it happy. So what scanner.close does precisely, I'm not completely sure, but um, I don't think it's important. It's not that important, but um, it will make the warning go away. So I advise you to do it. Uh, closing things that we've opened in general is, in general is very important in programming. Uh, in this particular case, perhaps not so important, but in general, it's a good thing to do. And what we're closing, I suppose, is is where we've got something that's scanning user input, trying to get user input and scanning it and trying to find out what's in it. That's what Scanner does. It, in this case, it's scanning system.in, trying to get stuff from sister in, uh, system.in, and it's trying to turn it, it's, it's looking for a number in that user input, basically, and it didn't find one. And by closing it, I suppose we're, we're closing, I guess, system.in, I'm not really sure, but it, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, so we know where the error is. We can't fix it at the moment. We know that if you enter letters instead of a number, it throws an exception. And we're going to be looking at exceptions later on. But for now, uh, we'll, we'll just leave it as it is. Let's try it again now and check that it works. There we go, still working. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.